Hello and welcome to this final guitar lesson on An Arm for the Love of God by Barrios. Un Lamosa por Amor de Dios, I believe. <laughs> I think. Anyway, we're going to be diving into the fantastic E major section. We're going to be checking out the left hand hacks, the chord shapes, the guide fingers. There are tons of them. All of it I'm going to go through and help you get this piece up and running. So let's just dive straight into An Arm for the Love of God by Augustine Barrios. Radio, let's dive straight into the wonderful warm world of E major with Barrios. We are here in first position with an E major chord. And all that's going to happen is it's just going to be four open E's, two G's, G sharps, obviously, at the fourth fret. So you're going to be able to, you need to be able to stretch that out. Then you're then going to use your fourth finger to slide up into the fourth position, third finger on its seven, and it's going to be. Or B for the melody, third finger, and then your second finger is going to come on to a B sharp. Yes, there is a B sharp. Double check your score. Some scores don't have it. First and second fingers are then going to shift up into fifth fret for the A, and it's going to be two Bs, two As, two C sharps at nine. So your fourth finger is going to be doing a lot of work, and again, stretching out. Make sure you're pulling back on your bars. Make sure that you've got the, the right anchor finger. So in this position, it's gonna be three, three and four, and then here it is one and two. While you put that in. Top tip, use your fourth finger with some violin slides to get into those quick high changes. Right, right hand is just to learn, gonna be breaking it up simply as one and two. Super simple with the right hand. Once you've got the left hand secure, then put the tremolo back. And that is the way to tackle the first three bars of this section. Right, welcome to the next two bars. Now, I suggest you fully get this under your fingers because this is quite challenging. We're up here at nine now. High E, C sharp at nine. And you need your second finger on the G sharp there. Now, back to the uh, knocking motif that is found throughout this piece which we haven't had yet it's the first time we get it you need to really pull back whether you like it or not that e is underneath a really crappy bit of your finger so there is a good possibility if you don't get into position properly that is going to happen and it does frequently so make sure it's not on your knuckle from this point I suggest pre-preparing your third finger because your third finger is going to slide into eight for the A sharp and then one is going to be down at the C sharp and then you're going to stretch out a little bit for G sharp, F sharp and then you're going to pivot on those two fingers. This bar is a lovely example from Barrios. He does this so often in all of his pieces. He also really, really loves this shape. It's going to pop up again. It pops up in Julia Florida. It pops up in um, Cathedral. It pops up in uh, the Choro de Sauvada. It pops up a lot, so get used to it. It's one of Barrios's favorite chord shapes that he uses. So again, here we go. Break it up slowly with um, easy right hand pattern. And there we go, another big shift, another violin slide. With tremolo, we're looking at.
Now, a couple of tips, obviously, make sure that your hand is clearing. If you have a look there, I'm pointing directly in. I'm not touching that string. Leaving these fingers down as anchors and then stretching these two out. Lasering ahead every time. Fourth finger, then first finger. And that is it for those two bars. Welcome to the next micro study. We're looking at three bars here. We're also looking at a lot of shifting, so you're gonna to need to laser ahead. We left it here at 11 and 14, fingers one and four respectively. We then have two, three on at 14 as well, stretched out. You need a bit of stretching here. So breaking it up slowly. From this point, you are then gonna shift down to fourth fret with the second finger on at five. Then you're gonna stay there third finger on, second finger off. This is now where your right hand mechanism is gonna move up onto the second string because it's the first time we're using the second string with tremolo. Your third finger is gonna guide up to seven and you're gonna get fingers two and four on at six and seven respectively. And this entire shape is gonna shift up to nine and 10 fret. And then believe it or not, you are gonna shift back down on second with the guide into first position with the first finger, third finger at four, and your fourth finger is gonna move onto the fifth fret E. And then it's gonna do a little wiggle and it's gonna stretch into fourth and third finger on. So you're gonna swap out of that position into this position. So fourth finger is gonna come down. We're gonna go over this again, but be aware that those are the shifts. So here we go, I'm gonna break it up nice and slowly. Knocking theme, laser ahead, fourth fret. Third finger on. Onto second string, up one fret with the third finger. Up four frets back down on the second finger, third string, then fourth finger at five, fourth finger off, fourth finger at four, third finger off, third finger down, and release the tension to E major again. There is a lot, especially if you consider the two bars previous to this, make sure that you are very, very clear about your shifts. I can't stress this enough. Guide fingers are gonna help you immensely in this section. Radio, here we go. top tip is I literally there's a lot of people that don't do this but you can slow down your tremolo and I suggest you do here you can pause there and then give it back in the next bar or the next two bars rubato is a thing it is possible here we're in the romantic music mode here all right with tremolo it looks a little bit like this micro study is going to be nice and easy it is back to the top opening material slide up fourth this time we have G sharp second finger and then your second finger is going to do a dance to B sharp now Barrio suggests just move in the first finger up. You can do that as well. The, the choice is yours, get that bar in early. So you've got this. Or this. Either way, um, try and keep your third and fourth finger on, which I just didn't do there. So hopefully you heard that. 
and then we are going to go into the A major chord again. Fourth finger off, fourth finger out. And we're going to stop there because you're going to shift down into seventh fret with a four and a two. So all together with tremolo, this looks like. Just to say, I prefer doing the stretch fingering as opposed to moving it up ahead of time because it is just more secure for me and I don't take any other fingers off. But that is an option for you to discover. Alrighty, so we left it off here at 7th fret with a 2nd finger and a 4th finger. You are then going to put a nice little hinge bar there using the tip joint flexed to get to the G sharp and a D sharp that are required and then you're going to shift down to fourth position with two and four there is a good reason for that and then you're going to shift down again to one and four so be aware again of the shifts which is uh, what we're doing in this section breaking it up easy right hand pattern stretches up. So that's the change there. It's a quick shift with your fourth finger and we're gonna leave it there for the next bit because again we just need to build this up in tiny tiny chunks with tremolo. microstate. So again, nothing too difficult. Um, obviously, I am also cutting that B short a little bit to try and get my second finger into that F sharp. But if you can get the clearance, so that's clearing the second finger clearing the string five, you won't struggle with that as well. So make sure that that is a, a priority just to make sure that you don't do this. Radio. So we're on the homeward bound uh, section of this E major. We have B sharp, F sharp, A sharp. Your second finger is going to act as an anchor and a pivot. First finger up and out to the low F sharp and back to the A sharp again. So that's nice and easy. And then your fourth finger is going to go onto the G sharp. You're going to stay in second position with that bar. Third finger up. Double Bs. And then three and four are going to slide down into second position before we go back to E again. Lovely, lovely two bars. A fantastic sound. There. With tremolo, we're looking at quick interruption here. I hope you're enjoying this uh, video. If you are, consider hitting the like button and maybe even subscribing to the channel. There is a ton of content just like this coming your way. Right, let's dive straight back into this fantastic E major section. Alrighty, so here we are. We're back to the knocking motif, the top of the piece. It is a complete and utter circle now. Barrios knows exactly what he's doing. I am going to give you some options. I do not play this in the standard way. So this is the standard way. Problem. Um, 
that is your choice. You, but if you're going to switch to what Barrios has fingered, I think he uses a 2-4. I would suggest you go straight into that. So this is my fingering. It's a bit of a stretch. Close them. And then back into E. And then we're into the next. So the choice is yours. But the main thing is we are back at the beginning with the opening motif, so super important to make something of it. With tremolo, it sounds like this. And then we're back into fourth position for that uh, E major with a G sharp in the bass. Alrighty, so we left it off at uh, fourth fret. So again, opening motif, third finger at seven, third finger at six for the G sharp. Now, here are the things. There is a, a possible way of playing this differently. Here is the first, um, the first fingering variation. You are going to shoot up with two and four to get that B and high E. Then try and get the third finger down for the G sharp while your first finger is moving into an E. So that is option one, as it were. Option two uses an open string. But bear in mind that the next note is going to be that thick C natural. This is the octave displacement of the melodic material. So that is something to bear in mind. Tone is not going to be the same. Barrios has suggested... That is his fingering. Which is more than achievable with a very quick flick of your second finger. So we're going to leave it there for that because that's quite a challenging um, bit to do. Let's have a look at this with tremolo. Okay, so we left it off with our fourth finger at 12. Now, doesn't matter which way you slice this, you need to be very, very gentle with your fourth finger here. So love your fourth finger, folks, because it is going to be staying down while your other fingers are going to be doing quite a bit of work. Opening motif, and then suddenly, Barrios is going to be taking us home. There, so that's a two, three. Fourth finger stays down the entire time. Then it is a bar across nine. Still barred. So I'm selecting strings three and two, four and three. And now you're going to stretch out third finger at 11 to nine, first finger to seven. First finger jumps up from seven. First finger goes back down to seven. There is a lot there, so I would suggest you definitely, definitely break it off. But if you need to, take your fourth finger off and just practice it. Like that. Get used to that and then put your fourth finger back in. so it's tied over. Try and make sure that it rings out. And then with tremolo. Final chord. Again, you can play it like this. Nothing wrong, lovely sound. 
right hand do a lot of open chord shape there. Or you can do it like I do, where I leave the bass notes on the bass strings. It's a heavier bass sound. And if you want, if you really want to mess with things, you can do a thumb strike all the way down through all three of those and a little M up right in the end. Either way, the choices are immense in this fantastic piece. But bottom line, get the left hand first with broken chords. And then put your tremolo in. Once you get your tremolo up and running, I mean that is that slow, then you need to start putting a metronome down and starting to speed up with it. Bear in mind, and you can hear it there, my nails are way too long <clears throat> for tremolo. I haven't trimmed them today, which is one of the reasons why I've done this. The last couple of videos they were trimmed, so there's not as much. The nail noise is intense with long nails once you start speeding up. So keep that in mind, you need slightly shorter nails for tremolo to work. Thank you very much for staying until the end. This has been brought to you by ClassicalGuitarRocks.com where there are a ton of lessons just like this ready for you. If you want to get your six string inspiration on and play some more challenging but beautiful music, head over now.